All right. <clears throat> and I'm back. For those of you who didn't want me to come back, well, guess what? I'm back. And it's my computer, and it's my microphone, and it's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. But, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like this microphone's kind of right in my face. I haven't done this in a, in a, I don't know. I guess I did this not too long ago. I'm trying to remember the last time I did it. Yeah, it was like last week, maybe. Uh, but I just feel like something's out of whack. Maybe my chair's low or something. Uh, but to get right into the news, Trump signed something. That's what the headline said. Trump signed something for the uh, immigration thing. And I was kind of split on it. I was little. Uh, I was on both sides. I was like, yeah. I, I mean, I kind of care. It is kind of messed up. At the same time, I was just like, I don't care. And what is it? Yeah, I mean, the, the kids have nothing to do with it. Like, the kids, they're just innocent bystanders. So I, I get it. Like, they, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it wasn't the kids' choice to be like, hey, mom and dad, let's leave Ecuador and let's go cross the border into the United States illegally. I highly doubt that's what it was. <clears throat> so... Another thing I heard was at the at the border that some of these kids weren't even with their real parents. Like they're they're it was like cousins and and uh, and strangers. Now I don't know how much truth to that there is, but I mean there are thousands and thousands of people down there where these kids are just being held and detained. But come on, people! Like how many how many how many how many children in America are living in foster homes? Or are looking to be adopted, and nobody, nobody makes any kind of um, argument for those kids. But you're worried about a bunch of kids that another country uh, couldn't take care of their own citizens, so they're seeking out uh, some sort of shelter and and um, <laughs> something in the United States, some sort some sort of future, in in the United States, um, refuge. I guess I guess you want to call it. But that's how is that our responsibility? And so I was watching these, uh, it was some, some news network, of course, the, it was one of the big ones, went to Arizona. They went to Glen, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and they were in some diner. And of course, they were interviewing elderly white people. And if that doesn't say some, some sort of uh, stereotype about your demographic of who you're trying to interview to get specific answers from, that's kind of it's kind of fucked up because you you know what they're going after you know what they're trying to do you know that they're trying to 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 get a specific type of person for an interview to say the wrong thing to fuel their fire and their point in their argument and their fight against this um but the it was actually an old lady that again I was kind of split on the conversation and this it really actually kind of made sense she goes you know, she's seen all this everywhere, and then they're trying to guilt any kind of Trump supporter into try, like being like, oh, you know, look what you're doing to these kids. And the lady's like, look, I'm a grandmother. Like, I love kids. But she goes, stop putting this out there to make me feel guilty. And I said, yeah, that's – what are you – you're just trying to make me feel guilty. So I, I, I have to – again, this whole public shaming thing, this whole PC, this whole environment where you can't have your own thoughts if it goes against the grain of societal – uh, norms in, in your current, uh, state or, or, or whatever it is. If you disagree with the, with, with everything that's going, and that's, that's another point here. Everything that's going on that you, you will what you see on TV and what you see on social media, you know how many, probably millions of Americans don't use that stuff. Like my dad, my dad does not use Facebook. He has a Facebook account, but he doesn't use it. He, does he watch the news? Nobody interviews him. No news network comes to Northampton, Pennsylvania and interviews my dad. But my dad's got p opinions and a lot of his friends have opinions that, and they, a lot of his friends share the same opinions. But th this whole thing about, oh, um, you know, you, you're bad if, if you don't support these children being separated at the border, that you're just horrible. And they went to Scottsdale, Arizona. I think it was Scottsdale. I don't think it was Glendale. Uh, I, Glendale, Scottsdale, something like that. But they interviewed this lady, and they, of course, they got uh, the answer that they were kind of searching for. But they kind of didn't. 
they kind of got and whatever motive they had behind that interview, it backfired because again, I was on the fence and I heard, I heard her, her portion, her interview. And I was like, yeah, I don't need, why do you need, why should I feel guilty about something that I have nothing to do with? When I was a correction officer in Lehigh County, I was, I was only a correctional officer for four months because I couldn't stand being in jail for eight hours a day. It was miserable. I mean, it is good money. Some of those guys, they, they actually enjoy it. I got guys in my unit that are correctional officers and they enjoy it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't go to jail for eight hours a day just to work. I remember I had this weird thing. Like after, after I would get off work, I worked first shift seven to three at three o'clock. I didn't, I had a gym membership, but I never used it because I, I just worked out outside. I wanted to be outside as much as possible. I just had this weird, like, I just felt isolated and, and, and entrapped. And I was like, no, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like I, I, my job shouldn't have to be getting locked up because like your lunch break, like you couldn't leave the prison. Like your, your eight hours you got in there, you, you, you went up because our, our jail was in like a, it was like a, a like a high story building and uh, <clears throat> it was built vertically. So once you went upstairs to whatever pod you were working on, whatever floor you were working on, you can go down to the break room for lunch. You got a half hour lunch, but that was it. Like you couldn't go outside and get like a sandwich or, or get some fresh air. Like that was it. You were eight hours a day. You were inside. And I was like, forget this. Um, where the hell was I going with this? It was uh, something with, um, oh yeah. So anyway, the, the one day I'm working on the pod or the, we call them pods, but the blocks, if you're whatever. Um, so I'm working on the block and I was doing my rounds and I saw we had like bars of soap that if the inmates were out of soap, we kept like a little stash in the drawer. And, um, this kid came up and he asked me, he asked me for some soap and like a, another day or two went by and he asked me for some more soap. And I just thought he was taking a lot of showers. What the fuck did I care? So I was doing my rounds the one day and then I noticed that he had a small TV in his uh, cell, but because he slept on the uh, the top bunk, he had these soap bars that he's been collecting. So, he, and he was sta- like stacking them underneath his TV so he could angle the TV up towards his top bunk so he could see the TV better. So I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, that's what you're stashing these soap bars for? Like other people need soap and we're out of soap and you're using them so you can prop your TV up like that was ridiculous. But then again, it was my fault because I wasn't keeping tabs on it, but I didn't think I needed to keep tabs on a bar of soap at a prison. So anyway, another guy came up to me, another inmate came up to me and he goes, Hey CO, can I get some soap? And I said, we're all out. You need some soap. You need to go talk to the dude in cell 28 or whatever it was. And the dude looked at me and he goes, why do I need to do that? That's, that's your job. If he's, if he's hoarding soap, that's your job. He goes, I don't have anything to do with that man. I'm in here for a completely different reason. I don't know him. And for something like some reason, like a light bulb clicked in my head. And I was, cause I was young. I was 25 years old. I was naive. I was like, or actually I think I was 24 at the time, but it, like, it, a light bulb clicked my, in my naiveness just kind of like disappeared in that moment and just clarity kicked in. I was like, wow, like this guy just schooled me. You're absolutely right. Like you have nothing to do with this guy, but I'm punishing you for me. And it goes back to another pre, uh, previous uh, clip that I did in, a, in another video about mass punishment. Like I took that mass punishment idea and I, I applied it to prison because I thought like, ah, they're all, they're all in here. They're all criminals. Like they all f- fit under the same umbrella. No, it, it was actually the opposite. It was like that guy's in here for whatever he did. That guy's in here for whatever he did. They are not grouped together. They just have to live here because that's what the law states. And it was just like this crazy... It was, it was incredible. And, um, so with this whole, like, yeah, I don't, whatever these, these immigrants are trying to do, whatever they're trying to cross the border, that has nothing to do with me. That has nothing. And why should I feel guilty about it? Is that kind of cold hearted to say? Absolutely. But then again, I don't go around feeling pity for every person that I see with a problem. I got my own problems. When was the last time you came to my door and worried about, you know, how I felt when I got home from Iraq or if I had a job lined up when I got home from Afghanistan? Probably none. How many of you assholes know that four special forces soldiers were killed in Niger back in October of 2017? How many of you guys were crying out over that? Seriously, like nobody talks about the important issues. Nobody tries to defend real problems here in home. Everybody wants to help the world. Go ahead, go out and help the world, but you can do that in your own backyard. There's a homeless guy that I pass nearly every day on my way to work. He's there. 
You know how many people stop and care about that? No, but the church across the street had a, a sign in its uh in its like yard or on the corner on on the of the of the intersection, uh, that had multiple languages written on it. But it was something about when when Trump first got elected and he was saying he was going to close the border down, which he did. He with the whole he shut down uh, the border. So this church went out and put something like you know we don't care where you come from you can be our neighbor or something along those lines something about you know we welcome anybody from any part of the world and we're happy to be your neighbor and it was like okay and they wrote it in like arabic they wrote it in spanish they wrote it in whatever other language i don't know i don't i don't i don't read other languages but um it was like wait a minute you're willing to do that for somebody that isn't a citizen but yet there's a guy not even 200 feet away that he's he's at he was at the same street corner every day for nearly two years that I pass him, but that church won't reach out to that man. It's uh, like, where is, where, where do you, where do you define your morals and ethics? But, but I'm supposed to change mine to accommodate your opinions. No, that's bullshit. That's, I'm not going to fucking do that. You're crazy. You're crazy to think that in a, in a, you, you, if you want to preach this whole, like, oh, America's free and, uh, the statue of Liberty, uh, it says, you know, give us your, your, your tired and your poor and we'll harbor you, you know, we'll, 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 we'll house you, you know, you can come here uh, to seek refuge. And it's like, okay, that's, 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 that's absolutely great. If that's your principle, but there's also another principle that says we can live freely any way you choose, as long as it falls within the the limits of the law. But why am I all of a sudden being um, guilt tripped for not following your same ethical policy or your same uh, moral values? I don't care what you're fucking. That has nothing to do with me. I probably. I probably have more the different ethical and moral values and opinions, and but that's what's great about America. We can live like that. I can have my opinion on this matter, but to to sit there and shame me and to saying that I don't care about these kids, who the who the fuck said I don't care about kids? Who said that this lady in Arizona doesn't care about kids? That's extremely bullshit. And you know what it is? It's about this arrogance. It's this everybody wants to whine and everybody wants to get their. Nobody actually puts work in. Nobody actually wants to do anything about it. When we did close the border and everybody's like, no, 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 it's America. You should be free. We should have free borders. We should have free this. You know, let them come here to close down the border. It's 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 uh, unconstitutional or whatever it is. I didn't see any of those motherfuckers opening up their house door, their front door, their back door, their garage door to house these people. It, I think there was even like little social experiments on YouTube that people went out on the street and they're like, hey, how do you feel about Syrian immigrants? And they're like, oh, I think that they should be able to come to America. Okay, cool. How many how many bedrooms do you have in your in your house? Do you have one to spare for five or six of them? Well, no. Well, of course you don't because you don't want them in your backyard. You just want everybody else to accept them. You know, stop it with this hypo- this hypocrisy, this bullshit that you that you want to sit there and point from everybody else. But when it comes down to actually doing what had that Trump actually signed whatever he signed to shut these people up about the border policy. But what, I, and it's kind of like, I, I'm all for him standing his ground, stand your ground because you're not a politician. You say things the way that you want to say them. Nobody's fucking pulling your strings. As far as I know, I don't I, look, I'm not trying to make this a complete political talk. I'm just saying that he, I don't, I don't think he, sh- yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'm torn on that too. I think he should have done something about it, but I don't think he should have done something about it because it's just, everybody's whining. Everybody's crying. All right, so the computer wanted to do a uh, automatic restart right in the middle of my rant. I was on a roll. I was on a roll. I was doing good. Uh, I think the point was uh, Trump signing off on this, whatever he signed off on, and and I think it's I'm I'm a little bit torn. I'm uh, I'm in between like yeah, it was good, and it was like of course it's good. It's you're gonna keep the the families together. Fine, have at it. Do whatever you need to do. But I think it's bad at the same time because it's you're just all these people whining. Everybody wants to whine anymore. Nobody actually wants to do the work themselves. They just want to whine until shit gets done. They just whine and whine and whine and whine. And I feel like it's a bunch of eight-year-olds in, in our society. Everybody that actually has a voice, again, like going back to my dad, like my dad doesn't use social media. My dad doesn't have that voice. So the ones that do, they actually reach out. And it's like it's it's good and it's bad because 
It's good because you're actually getting your voice heard, but it's bad because those are the only ones you hear. You don't hear about the millions of Americans that don't use that stuff, the ones that have been around long enough to have the experience, the life experience, to know what previous presidents have been like and have, have done to the country and to the economy and have actually experienced enough to have a say that would actually be valuable. They don't use that kind of social media. so they don't. And is it their fault? Kind of, but kind of not. Why should social media be the only... The only um, platform that y- you can use to get your point across. Why is nobody going out and, f- and finding these people in, uh, in in backwoods Nebraska or, or, or Kentucky or out in the in, in, in the plains of Oklahoma or something like that? You know, everybody wants to go to these these liberal college cities. And, and can I just say I'm tired of this David Hogg kid? I don't even listen to any of his shit, but. Why do, Why is everybody putting this kid on a platform, this 17, 18-year-old kid, just because he was involved in a school shooting? Where was the kids that were involved in Columbine? Why didn't they get a platform like this kid? And who is this kid? Why is, he, why is anybody diving into this kid's intellect? Does he have intellect? What kind of life experience does this kid have to sit there and tell our society how to live? Oh, congratulations. You've been to uh, gym class? Great. You have some awesome experience, kid. I want to know more about you. No, that's not happening. That's not what I'm interested in. I don't give two flying fucks about you, kid. Congratulations, you survived the school shooting. Move on with your life. Go do something good. But don't tell us about gun rights and, and telling fucking people that have actually fought for our country that they can't they that they can't fucking have guns. What do you know about gun rights? You've had one lousy experience <laughs> with guns. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Okay. Anyway, that was a a, a bit um, insensitive, but it's true. You had one bad gun experience. Don't put that on everybody else. That's what I was saying earlier. Why is it? Why do you have to make me feel guilty about the choices I make because of your experience? Do I look? There are some veterans that go around telling people, "Oh, well, I had friends that died in, in Iraq and Afghanistan for the freedoms that you have." I use it as a punchline now. I use it as a joke if I do say it out loud. More or less to my girlfriend when I'm just trying to trying to get like a, a jab, like a rib jab. But for the most part, you don't see re- veterans going around blaming Americans for this society. Like, oh, I went overseas and I fought for, for you to have. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of common sense. That's what we fight for. We fight for our country to, to conduct itself as it is. But I'm kind of, I'm, I'm on the fence with the way, you know, Trump signed off on this so quick but that's that's also another impressive thing would and would the previous administration or administrations have signed off on something this quick this guy's getting stuff done and i don't care what you're if you're left right if you were hillary or or sanders or whoever the hell you wanted in office other than trump you got you got to admit this guy is he's He's getting, he's working, he's doing stuff. And and this is a prime example. And I'm, I'm waiting to see how they turn this around, how they spin this around. But Americans with their whiny, I'm just going to whine. I'm just going to complain. I'm not going to focus on real issues because it's, I feel, I think I said it in a previous episode about the acceptance, about people just want to be accepted. There's people out there that don't agree with this, but they will publicly so they don't get scrutinized. So they will not be looked at in a specific way, or they won't use viewership or friends or... I mean, I I, I kind of lost friends over over the election. Like, there was some stupid stupid comments coming out, and I was just like, yeah. But I, I just chose. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna not follow you on Facebook, or or I didn't have Instagram at the time. But I was like, I'm just not gonna follow you. Like, that's it. But some people they didn't they didn't agree with some of the stuff I was saying, and they're just like, yeah, I'm, you know, I can't believe that you would say stuff like that. I was like, I didn't know that our friendship was based solely on politics. Like, I thought we were friends long before this election happened. How shallow are you? Uh, I'm kind of shallow too, but it's it's different when you, you, you see it over something. Like, I won't lose a friend over politics. Like, I understand politics is, is kind of like, I've got friends that are religious. I'm not religious. I'm not going to stop hanging out with somebody because they're Catholic or Muslim or, or whatever it is. I'll stop hanging out with you if you're a com- complete fucktard asshole. That's why I'll stop hanging out with you, but not because of your political views. Now, if you you if you come to my house every day and you bring it up, or you get violent with me, or you start telling me how I should live and how I should think, yeah, you can go fuck yourself because I don't 
truly care about that. I'm going to think the way I want to think. I'm a human being. I'm not programmed. I can, well, kind of, that's another thing. So I was thinking about this too, like this whole, uh, this whole, like, so I was talking to the girlfriend the other night. When you have straight guys, there's really no like level of straight. Like you're not like, oh, this guy's straight or this guy's like extremely straight. But I noticed like with gays and I have gay friends I've, I've, I've known plenty of gay guys. I actually hung out in a gay bar in Palm Springs accidentally, but there's like levels of gay. There's like levels of like, you're gay, but you're like, you're just kind of normal. And it's all because I was watching that, um, love Simon movie, which was actually a pretty good movie. Uh, but there's like, I'm gay, but like, I'm not going to be flamboyant about it. Then there's like, I'm gay. And like, I like fashion, so I have to dress right. And there's like, I'm gay and I got to be like flamboyantly gay. And then there's gay and it's like, okay, uh, like Nick Swardson and uh, I, now pro- I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Like that's like over the top gay. But there's no like levels of straight. Like I was thinking about, was like, there's no like, ah, I'm straight, but I'm just going to like dress how I want to dress. And there's like, I'm straight, but I got to wear like, like a, a chain wallet and a leather jacket. And then there's like, I'm straight. I got to get like a a tattoo of like a naked chick on my forearm or something like that. Like there's really no levels of straight. I don't know why that was so funny. It just kind of occurred to me when I was watching that movie. I was like, yeah, there's really no, like there's levels of gayness, but there's, there's really not a whole lot of like levels of gay or I'm sorry. uh, I guess I said that backwards. Like there's, there's, there's levels of gay, but there's like really no levels of like straightness. I don't know why that kind of, I don't know how that worked its way into this conversation. But yeah, it's a, just kind of uh you know, stop stop putting your stop putting your shit on me, bro. Stop putting your uh your views and your opinions and your way of life on me. I've said this numerous times and I don't know why other people haven't caught on to it, but you know, I was watching this video this Steven Crowder guy who he makes some valid points. He's kind of kind of douchey, but he's he makes some valid points and he was doing this uh he got a permit and he went onto a college campus and he was uh he was doing this like Oh, there's only so change my mind. And he would have people come up and have like sophisticated conversations with these people. And like they were supposed to try to change his mind that hey, there's more than two genders or whatever the topic might might have been. And uh, the he the one the one girl was going up and it was on transgenders. The conversation turned to, and he said she said or he said something about her being a her. And she goes, see, now, why would you assume that I'm a girl like that? You know, understand that 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 could be uh, considered an act of violence. And I thought, how is that an act of violence? Like you and it, and this is my point here, because I say this a lot. Why should we alter our way of life to accommodate yours? I don't see you altering your way of life to accommodate mine, nor would I ask you to. You want to look you want to go out. It, look, if 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 you want to. If you wanna if you wanna masturbate with a, a a belt around your neck, holding onto a Teletubby, I don't care. Just don't force that on me. I don't need that. I don't want to do that. But don't make me have to sit here and 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 conform my way of life to, I, I guess, I don't know. Just cons- like I'm considerate. I am considerate. But to the fact that if if I walk up to somebody and they they clearly look like a woman. And then you're going to get these people like, well, what is a woman supposed to look like? Go fuck yourself, dude. Man has been around since way before this gender policy. We've all been programmed to kind of understand, hey, a girls most likely have long hair or, or they have breasts or they have wider hips or whatever it might be. But even when I was a CEO, I was talking about this earlier when I was a CEO, when you come into jail, and I don't know why nobody's brought this up, there's no transgender pod. You get identified where you live in a jail, whether it's a male block or a female block, and that's the, the, defined by your 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 physical attributes on your body, is whether you have a penis or a vagina. So you can identify as a woman all you fucking want, but if you have a penis, you're going on the male block. That's no fucking shit. That's how it fucking works. But frankly, I don't give a fuck what you want to identify as. If you want to be a raccoon, be a raccoon. Just don't expect me to go around my life, the rest of my days, having to walk around and, and uh, expect people to expect of me uh, to to carefully examine you and, and ask your feelings while I'm 
if I'm in the mall, if I'm in a clothing store, or the grocery store, uh, if I if I misrepresent you. And the funny thing is that this dude, <clears throat> this Crowder guy, he asked a trans woman or or a defender of trans people, how many pronouns are there of the of, of genders and she couldn't answer so how are you how do you not have an answer and expect us to know the answer or go around with the correct response if, if you don't have an appropriate answer it was it was extremely it was bullshit but just this fucking shit like i don't expect you to walk up to me and and especially with that like i'm not gonna pussyfoot around it like i'm not gonna go cause, frankly because i don't give a flying fuck dude i don't care what you want to identify as and I'm sorry that you had some mommy or daddy issues growing up and you wore those UFO pants and painted your nails black and, you know, whatever happened that nobody, sh not enough or no friend showed up to your birthday party or, or your, your, your crush didn't ask you out to prom or Jesus Christ, get over it. It's a big world out there. You, you're not, I say this all the time, not everybody you meet, you're not going to like everybody you meet and not everybody you meet is going to like you. Get over it. It's a big fucking world, and there's a lot of things to go out there and do. I talked about that in the previous episode. There's a lot of people to meet. There's other... Everybody sticks in their same town. How many friends do you have right now that have never left their hometown? They grew up there. They went to elementary school. They went to high school. Maybe they went to college at a community college or a local university, and they never fucking left. But all they do is talk about how bad that fucking town is. Like, yeah, okay, you know, you can move two towns over and it's probably going to be a completely different experience. You can move a hundred miles away and start fresh. It's incredible. I live in Allentown. You go down to Harrisburg, it's like a completely different world. Do that. Do fucking that. But I'm not going to say, uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm buying genders are in binary code and, and, uh, are you fucking kidding me? Go out, get a fucking job, get a... If I was an employer and you came to my work, I don't give a flying fuck what your gender is or what you, you consider your sex as. Do the job and don't make anybody else uncomfortable. But you see these businesses now, they're trying to be so politically correct that they're firing people for not being sensitive or considerate of these gender phenoms or, or whatever they want to call themselves, these 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 Lois and Clarks or, or whatever they are of the gender community. Get over it, dude. I don't care what your sexual preferences are. Just don't put that shit on me. And and you're going to sit here and say, well, do, oh, you must have some sort of problem with gay people. No, I don't. I have gay friends. There was a dude in boot camp, and that's another thing with the, with the military. and gay. Dudes, you ask anybody in the military, we don't give a f We don't care. We, we do not care about what gender you are or what your sexual preferences are. As long as you carry the load like the rest of us. Everybody gets a pack in the military. And when you drop that pack because you're lazy or you're, you're, uh, you're just a shitty fucking service member, whatever it is, somebody else has to pick that pack up. Somebody has to carry that weight. And if you're not carrying your weight, I don't care if you're a dude. I don't care if you're a chick. I don't care if you're, you're a dude that wants to be a chick or a chick that wants to be a dude. Just do your job. I had a, a, a guy in boot camp. We all assumed he was gay. I don't, I don't think he ever actually came out and said it. But it's not like I, I went into the bathroom and like because we all showered together because we had to. We were told to. It's not like I saw him in 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 the shower and I was like, oh, I got to cover my junk because he's gay. No, he was serving his country. He was there just like the rest of us. He was doing the same shit like the rest of us. He was doing push ups, jumping jacks, the 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 hikes, the the ruck marches. He was doing the O courses. He was doing drill with a. He was earning the title of marine like I was. I don't care what his sexual preferences were. Now, if he would have came on, yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's different. <laughs> But I never, I never, I never considered that because I didn't worry about that. But who are these people that go around saying, "Oh, you need to let transgenders in the military"? You understand your tax dollars are paying for that shit. You, you know uh, what's what's her name? Uh, Chelsea Manning, the WikiLeaks or whatever the hell it was. And you know where where that dude went? He went to a military prison, and then your fucking tax dollars paid for his service, his his trans process into becoming a woman and then that fucking dude got interviewed by oprah or whatever news magazine rolling stone or something like that like chelsea manning and that so you want to say that we want to accept it but then you're not considering all the tax dollars that you're paying into it that you're helping these people and i had to do a, 
<laughs> I had to do a class recently on this whole transgender bullshit in the military and how we need to be accepting. And I don't care. I Just pull your weight, pull your load, do what you need to do. But there is a, a, a moment in that service member's career where they become not only non-deployable, but they're, they're not, they can't do anything. They, they, they're, they're essentially getting paid. So, so your tax dollars go into funding this person's hormone treatment and then the social treatment where they get to go out and actually experiment like, or not experiment, but get like, uh, uh, accustomed to their, their new body, I guess after the, and then during the surgery, they're, they're getting paid to be in the military, but they don't have to perform anything. They don't have to deploy. They don't have to do any duty because they're going through this process. Now, it's not a very long window, but it's long enough to be noticeable. And say that person was slotted to deploy and you have a child or a brother or a family member or a friend that's in the military. Well, guess what? That person can't deploy now, so somebody's got to fill his shoes. Everybody gets a pack. When somebody drops that pack, somebody else has to pick it up. Guess what? It could be your family member. It could be their fifth or sixth deployment. Uh, they might have a kid on the way. And uh, guess what? They're in that person's shoes now. So it's, it's things that you don't consider. It's things that everybody else has to deal with, but because they choose this, this, this random, oh, I've been a woman my whole life. And look, it's not like gays is a new thing. Like gay, gay people have been around, men and women, for centuries. So, and actually, it's funny because in previous civilizations, it was okay. Like being gay, it's actually in some cultures, it's still okay. I mean, it's funny that we had to do this whole thing like where we recently in the last decade or two, we have, we've had to openly accept it. And we're still getting over like the, this whole like a wedding cake thing. And uh, it's, oh, who cares, man? Uh, I'm sure I'm sure they're going to pay. I'm sure their money is as green as everybody else's. But you have to make a big deal out of it. And at the same time, because I'm so I'm so fucking middle of the fence, it, it's embarrassing because I understand. I understand one side and I understand the other side. Like, dude, it's it's not that big of a deal. Like, let it go. They're going to pay money for this cake let them pay money like their money's not good enough because they're because they're gay but on the other hand i understand where this guy's coming from he doesn't agree with it he owns the business he has the right to refuse business to anybody that he seems i don't know that he deems that fits that category i don't know how to say that any 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 clearer than that in my head it makes sense but trying to get it into words my point here is he can refuse service for any reason and because it's his his beliefs, that's what he he believes. But now, because we're so politically correct in America, the they took it to court. They're trying to, and what I said earlier, they're trying to make this fucking guy uh, uh, rework his way of life to accommodate theirs. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair at all. Why couldn't they just go down the fucking street? And go to another baker. I'm pretty sure there was another fucking baker somewhere around there that they could have fucking got a cake from. Jesus Christ, everybody. And I heard that too. I heard the argument that, well, if they would have done that, they wouldn't have had a story. And that they just, they, they egged it on. They made it a big deal so that there was a story there. And they, they probably saw dollar signs. Everybody just wants the, the easy way out. But Christ, people, get over this whole politically pol politically and that's oh jesus i'm so i'm so happy that people are finally catching on and just not giving in to this this bullshit now i i did see um this week with that lady who called the cops on that that little black girl for selling water i was like okay what are you selling water for like the, anybody could go down the strip but i guess it's for a cause same same reason people do those like those baseball funds where they get, you know, the box full of candy. But I'm thinking like what do you have to do in your day that you're bothered by that so much that you're going to call the cops on a little girl? And it's not like she like they weren't bothering her. I could see if like they were in her front yard, but she was living in like a apartment complex or like some sort of condo minium something along those lines. Like it wasn't bothering you, but you made it your problem. That's just people with too much time on their fucking hands. Too much time on your hands. And then shit like, this, shit like that happens. But then you look at that red hen, that restaurant. You have all these liberals talking about acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. And, uh, oh, but here comes 
Sarah Huckabee Sanders and a liberal restaurant owner or whatever staff, they choose not to wait on her and you're all for it. How is that? Okay. Isn't that I've noticed most of these, most of these liberals are the most hypocritical motherfuckers. They're, they're the most, they preach all this acceptance. And I, I, I I've had, I have some liberal friends, so I'm not saying that I, I don't see their point of view on things, but I'm, I'm also saying I'm not going to lose friends with them, but I will call them on their bullshit. Just like I expect them to call me on my bullshit, but they're these ones that they preach acceptance but when it comes to 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 turning it turning it around, they they all want the most um, peaceful reactions until you disagree with them. And the fact that I'm saying this right now, and some of you out there are going to listen to this, and you're you're probably liberal, you're going to get all defensive, and you're going to get all all up in arms over this. But you know I'm right. You know that you are the most accepting. You preach acceptance. You preach peace. You preach belongingness and this open borders and let everybody be who they want to be until you disagree with them. And then they get pretty fucking violent. <laughs> That's hilarious. But again, it's a free country. Do what you want to do. Just don't fucking put it on me. Christ. Man, and then you're probably like, okay, with the whole Trump thing, like, Mike, it's been over a week since Trump signed that. Like, you, why are you talking about this now? It's, I like to get a little bit of perspective before... I, I start talking about something. News networks, they hear a story and they fucking jump on it as soon as possible without getting any validation or any kind of solid references. They, they Because it's all about being first. This country is all about being first. Our society is all about being first. Let's get to the moon. Let's be there first. Uh, let, let's, let's uh, you know, there's a mass shooting going on. Let's be the first one on site. Um, I watched that movie Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal and it, I didn't, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit. I don't know how true it is. I know it's a movie, so I, I keep that in mind. But I'm like, there's got to be some fucking hard truth to this. If you never saw Nightcrawler, he's uh, an amateur journalist and, or not journalist, but like, like uh, he goes around with a camera and, and gets news and he, he gets the this footage and he sells it to news networks and they pay high money for it. And regardless of the content, they just want it first. They're saying, you know, who else? What other networks and what other stations are you talking to? Who did you talk to? We'll pay. We'll we'll, we'll pay higher or we'll pay less or whatever it, um, it comes down to. But it really resembles how much our society they want the information first because they want the rights. They want to claim that they've been there first and they're the first ones on scene, and that's who people are going to tune into. And because of that, they don't always have the facts. They don't always have the most legitimate information. But because people are too ignorant to fucking check it out themselves, they'll jump on that news network and they'll they'll take everything for face value and they'll believe it and they'll run with it. They'll they'll go back and they'll tell their friends, oh, look what happened with this, look what happened with that. And it's just incredible. But I I, I did I, I waited. I, I wanted to to kind of pick some people's brains and a buddy of mine said, you know, these people are looking for uh sanctuary and they come from Ecuador or, or um, Peru, but they come all the way to America for sanctuary because they're trying to find a conflict free country. But just like he, my friend said, they passed through two or three of them on their way to America. And it was funny because I had to Google exactly where Cancun was because I was just there this past September. Uh, we went down to Puerto Van Mexico, something. <laughs> Playa de Carmen, maybe that was it. But we were down there. We were at a resort and there was plenty of jobs. I mean, we go out on the highway and uh, we actually went down to, um, I think it was Playa de Carmen and we were just north of that. But it was friendly. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel, now I've been in worse countries, so I didn't feel like, oh, this is kind of sketchy or, or I need to be worried. I mean, I kept an eye on my girlfriend, make sure that, you know, there weren't any fucking weird people, but that's anywhere you go. But I, I Googled it. I Google earth to, to make sure I was, I was, I had an idea of where it is and how many fucking tourists go down there. And with a few isolated incidents because of alcohol involvement, Nothing has happened at these resorts, and it seems like a pretty safe place to go. But fucking cat. But still, there's plenty of, of countries in between South America and the United States that are probably good sanctuary 
countries and they have sanctuary cities where these people could have found work in that they could have been hostile free or or threat free but they chose to come to america and it's like oh okay that's a good idea but now you're seeing all this crap with the, the these images coming out of these kids that are being separated from their families but because people wanted to report on them first they they believe it they take it at face value but now slowly slowly it's coming out that some of these images were faked and some of these images were uh taken out of context and it's it's just it's kind of it's sad because people run with it people they posted it on time magazine trump looking down at that kid and i just heard something today about that not being accurate that was taken out of context it's just funny that these people they, they nobody wants to think for themselves they want to see something that somebody else puts up and uh that's a <laughs> If you saw Fight Club, and this is how dumb I was at one point, where they put the billboard up that if you put uh, used car oil on your front lawn, it'll make the grass grow or something like that. I actually asked my brother that. I was like, is that true? It's Or use this fertilizer or something that, along those lines. But they put it up on a billboard, and it was in a mood. I didn't know. And I asked. I was like, oh, is that true? Is that how how that works? That is extremely embarrassing of me to say that, but... I was dumb. I saw it and I took it for vase value and I didn't research it. And I just, I was like, oh, all right, maybe that's true. But I noticed everything in life, you have to validate it. You have to get some sort of, uh, you have to, you have to, you have to look it up yourself. You have to do the research because if you just start, what you fucking cat. Hey, yeah, you get, yeah, you better run, kick that cat's ass. But if you don't research it yourself, you're just going to go around with shitty information. I was just saying that at the last drill. I was talking to people about distributing shitty information. I asked simple, simple questions, and guys are giving me the wrong answer left and right. And they're like, I said, yeah, where did, you, where did you research that? Where did you get that information from? And they're like, well, so-and-so told me. That's not valid. Did you actually look it up, or did you just think, okay, this guy must know what he's talking about. I'll run with that. No, you got to look the information up. But back with the... Um, the immigration thing, I, I'm, I'm on one side and I'm on the other. I can see it from both perspectives. I understand that some of these people are probably good trying to get to a safe country. Some of them aren't. Some of them are, are, are trying to, the, and it's funny because coming from, you know, I, I did time in Iraq and I did time in Afghanistan. I saw the good and the bad. I saw, you know, there were, there were towns we'd go into and you'd, you'd see these middle-aged military aged men and they'd be they'd come up to you and uh they'd ask you questions or they try to get as close to you as possible or they would they wouldn't come near you at all but they just watch you and we knew because they were just wearing street clothes that they were probably bad guys just waiting you know they they had something but we didn't we couldn't do anything um and then uh there were, were there were villages we'd go into and they were we had them uh i think they called them like the sons of liberty at one point or uh, we just called them concerned local citizens, but they were like neighborhood watch people that really didn't like Al Qaeda and the Mujahideen, but uh, they, they weren't part of the military. So, and they were so in like rural areas uh, that they would patrol their own town. So we, uh, you know, we would give them like food and water and uh, we'd tell them like, hey, we're right down the street. Um, this is how to contact us if you need us. And the one day, and I got pictures on my laptop my other laptop, uh, of this, but we went there after they, um, we got, we sent some, uh, Iraqis out and they got ambushed. And, uh, it was, a, I think like the next day I actually got back out to our patrol base and, uh, went up the road and you could see like, they, like there were vehicles on fire and there was like bodies and skulls in the vehicle. And then there was another one where like, uh, like we were finding, uh, decapitated bodies and like chicken coops and and um there was a a dude's bicycle and then his flip-flops and then his body dead next to it like he was trying to run away so like some some of those it's like yeah they are really in bad spaces and they need that sanctuary but like we were there trying to help them like we're not down in mexico trying to help these people or uh or ecuador or 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 cuba or puerto rico right now i heard it has it pretty bad um, but then you have, you also have the guys that they, they, I do believe that they should be here, like interpreters in Afghanistan and Iraq. Two of my interpreters 
they gained their visas and they came here from Iraq. Uh, they were both Iraqi. One actually joined the army. Uh, I believe he's in the airborne, which is crazy. Uh, but the other guy, he, uh, I think he lives in New York, but he's going to like architecture school or, or school for architecture somewhere. But it's like, they, like, I do believe that people like that, they, they, they helped us in Iraq, saved my ass numerous times. And now they're home. So it's like, yeah, I, I believe that they should be able to come here. But man, we, we can't, but that's another thing. You can't save everybody. You can't help the world. You're looking at it right now. Like we've been at war since 2001. So you're looking at 17 years. Well, I mean, 2002, uh, I guess it would be uh, something like that, whatever. But yeah, 17 years. Um, but we can't save everybody. We can't. And you're crazy to think that you can. It's just, it's not possible. You have to save who you can, when you can, but you, you can't do that long term. You can't do that for everybody. At one point, we have to take care of ourselves. And I, I don't think, I don't think everybody understands that. I don't think these people have got enough life experience or, or have actually gone out and made sacrifices, not, not financially, but I mean, physically, mentally, the deprivation or, or seclusion from your family, from your friends, made some sort of commitment and seen how fucking hard it really is. It's not, it's not easy. It looks easy on paper, but try to do that in real life. It's, 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 uh, it's different. It's not a video game. It's not your world of Warcraft that you're playing on your laptop. It's, it's different, but Christ, man. Oh, what a, what a crazy two weeks. It's, it's, um, Man, it's incredible. I just posted on my Facebook that, uh, well, I, I didn't post it. My girlfriend did. She's been telling me that she's she, she's been dying with this information. She's like, I got to tell somebody. And I, I told her no. I, I didn't want to be one of those, uh, God, is it fucking annoying, those people that post pictures and pictures over and over and over their kids. Like, I don't know if you know this, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Your fucking kids are not important to me. I've, I've always been a... Uh, a big proponent of all babies are ugly. So when somebody's like, Oh, look how pretty that baby is. It looks like an alien. Like that's just gross. Fucking keep that shit in your wallet, dude. I don't want to see pictures of your kid. Uh, and if you're going to, if you're going to sit here and, and try to give me, if you're going to message me with advice of like, Hey man, babies change you and, and, uh, wait for the long nights and, and wait for the baby, the diaper changing and all this. Save your fucking shit. Nothing you say is going to get me even more prepared than I. If you're not mentally prepared and financially preparing for a baby once you find out that your significant other is pregnant or you or you yourself is pregnant, then you probably aren't going to be ready by the time that the baby comes. But I don't need I don't need this. Oh, wait till wait till this happens or wait till this happens or wait till the terrible twos. Cut the fucking shit. Go fuck yourself. If you're going to start doing that, I will. I, unfriend bro don't fucking come at me with that shit jesus christ man is it an, i've heard it i've heard it from the girlfriend oh uh, we walked into a restaurant the other day olive garden i like the calamari walked into olive garden and she saw a baby at a uh at a high chair and she goes she pointed at the baby and she goes hey babe are you ready for that i looked at her and right in the middle of the restaurant i said shut the fuck up shut <laughs> Like, what is this whole fucking guilt tripping about? The whole, oh, you gonna be, you gonna be ready for this? Ooh, you gonna be, you gonna be ready for the baby in the high chair and then feeding it? Yeah, I have to be a fucking parent. You get forced into that. It's like people that ask me for like advice about like, hey, you know what? Uh, I've had it years ago when I was a CEO. Uh, hey, hey, what, what, do, what can I expect from being a CEO? Or what can I expect from this military school? Or what can I expect from this job? I, I've, I've seriously, or another big question was the, the gym, like, Hey man, how do you get your, uh, your PT score so high or whatever it is? Fucking go do it. Go, go, go do it. Go fucking do, do get it done. Do it for get her done. Go fucking do it. You're just, it's going to come. You have to fucking do it. No advice. No words of wisdom are going to fucking make me any better at it. Don't, you're not going to prepare me by giving me your fucking, <laughs> oh man, we'll wait for those late nights. Shh, dude, go fuck yourself, dude. Go the fuck away. I didn't ask. I didn't, I've, I've never walked up to somebody and been like, 
Hey, man, uh, we've got this baby on the way. Any advice? No, it's all unwanted advice. It's kind of like sexual assault. I kind of feel like Terry Crews right now. I should go before Congress or the Senate and do a hearing and be like, yeah, this dude came up to me and he's like, yeah, so here's some unwanted uh, baby advice for when you become a dad. Like, no, uh, where's my rape whistle? Because I don't need that shit. Go the fuck away. Christ, these fucking unwanted goddamn... Uh, anyway, uh, but I do appreciate uh, those of you that are, are, are watching this. I've, I've had some, uh, some of you actually message me. I, I really appreciate it. I didn't think anybody was watching this shit until, until I started making the small edited clips. Um, I, was, I was really <laughs> I was thinking this wasn't going fucking nowhere. But now I'm, I'm actually I'm really excited and uh, yeah, so I, I really appreciate those of you that have watched it and, and have gotten or have given me some views and, and have hit, hit the like button and, and given me some feedback. Um, so uh, I, I, I did want to say uh, one of my buddies, he goes, uh, wait, waiting to hear, hear, uh, hear you talk shit about me. And uh, this dude, um, Hambone, <laughs> he... Uh, I was living in the barracks, and when he first time I met Hambone, he said he wanted to break my legs because uh, he found out that I had a slot on the team getting ready to deploy to Iraq, and uh, he thought I took his slot. And you, I was an E, I was an E three, I was a lance corporal, and he was a sergeant, E five, and like I was still kind of like very boot ish. I yeah, I was a boot, and uh, I was like, oh, uh, I was like, I'm sorry, sergeant. Like I didn't. I didn't know. Um, but turns out he's like, are you living? And, and we had three fucking Marines to a room. And I remember my one fucking roommate, I would catch him on Saturday mornings. just jerking off like underneath his blanket. Like, but he wasn't trying to hide it. It just, <laughs> it looked like a ping pong paddle ball just going up and down in his blanket. And I'm like, it was my first experience. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? Then again, my other roommate, he would ask to borrow my laptop so he could go jerk off in the bathroom. I was like, no, that's not fucking happening, dude. But so anyway, he knew that I was living in a, in a room with three guys. And he's like, yeah, my wife is, uh, is deploying. He's like, we got a house out in town. He's like, you want to move in with me? And, uh, I actually, I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, I was very appreciative, but then I found out like, I, I kind of just, I, I would hang out upstairs in the spare bedroom and it really was. It was awesome. But anytime I go downstairs, he wanted to wrestle. And he'd always kick my ass. And I just felt like I was back in high school again. I was like, why am I getting picked on? But uh, I don't know if it was just tough love. I don't, maybe you can you can message me after this. But I was like, I, yeah, man, you always wanted to wrestle. And I was like, just picking on me. But yeah, Hambone, I love you. Uh, it's, yeah, that's just one of those, like, I kind of feel like I'll be in a, a VFW or an American Legion one day and just telling these stories even though I don't do it now, I, I refuse to go into VFWs and American legions just cause I'm tired of all the war stories. But one day when I'm older and, uh, and I'm wearing one of my Velcro hats and uh, I got the American flag on there and maybe some pins, uh, I'll be able to tell stories like this, but yeah, yeah, it's, you'll be in some of them. Uh, yeah. So again, I just, it's been a long week. Uh, I, I actually had to piece together. There's, I think there's like three parts of this, trying to get it in um but yeah I'm gonna, I, again I, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's actually watching it uh it actually uh really made me feel kind of cool and uh it kind of gave me some motivation to keep keep going and, and get another uh other content other things that i just want to talk about and and hopefully some of you agree some i hope i actually hope some of you don't agree so you can comment on it and uh and give me your feedback so I can argue you a little bit. I'm very open. I'm I'm very open. I'm very I'm very I'm not one sided. I'm two sided. I I see different sides of arguments, and I actually really like debating it. Uh, but I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, and then uh, yeah, until until next time, I think I'm I'm gonna uh, try to get one in uh, next week if I can. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. <laughs>